Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Primus Learning. Um, my name is Primus Veku and uh, welcome to this edition of, um, you know, our weekly demos or our videos. And today we have yet another interesting uh, project for you, um, especially for those who are working in the DevOps space, for those who are solutions architects, and of course, those who are involved in migration projects. This project is going to be a migration project and we are migrating applications from an on-premise um, uh, server. So we are migrating from an on-premise environment and moving to ECS in AWS. So the assumptions that we have for this project are you have to have an AWS account. You have to know how to create an EC2 instance. You have a basic understanding of Docker. So those are the assumptions. Also, there is another assumption. One to assume. So this is the fourth one. Let's say, um, assume that an EC2 instance is your on-premise server. So we'll be assuming that an EC2 instance, of course, is created in AWS, is an on-premise server. It's your on-premise server. Let's. It's just like a box, a local server on your on-premise environment, right? It needs not have anything, anything, you know, any unique thing nothing you just need to have an ec2 instance running or a server running anywhere it could be running uh, you could have an instance that's basically running in 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 your local machine you can have it i don't know anywhere right we just want to be able to create a docker environment in that server that's it uh, in this case we are assuming that um, the ec2 instance would be our uh, on-premise server uh, so those are the assumptions. And here are the steps that we want to follow. We have quite a number of steps that would follow to get this project to completion. So the first thing is that we'll create an EC2 server on, on the AWS console. We'll just use an AWS console. We don't need to do, it's not complex, just a simple basic server. And we'll install Git inside the, the, the server and clone our Git repository. Once we've done that, we install Docker into that server and then um, create a private ECR repository. So we need uh, an ECR repository where our images will be pushed out. We need to configure our AWS credentials to that EC2 instance or to that server, right? Then we'll go to the EC2 repository and copy some commands that would run after creation. And after the running all the checks and confirming that the image is existing we'll make sure it's running on this port right here on you see this port port 80 and then after all of that we'll check to make sure the application is up and running and we'll consider that to be our local environment application or we'll consider that to be the application that is running on our local server that is running on premise which we want to migrate right so we want to build that application that want to migrate and then migrate the application to ECS. So that's the first, first section of this uh, tutorial. The second section is basically running the application on, on, on ECS, right? So migrating the application to ECS. And what we'll do in this section is we will create an ECS cluster. So we'll create an ECS uh, cluster that's ECS stands for Elastic uh, Elastic Container Service. That's the AWS service for uh, containers. Then we'll create a task definition under that cluster and create a service inside the cluster. Once we do that, we'll go to the load balances and copy the DNS name and make sure it's working. So you see that this one is way easier. This process is way easier than this one. And um, by doing all of this, we'll be migrating the application. So guys, follow us through the tutorial and you will learn some neat things um, as we go along uh, this tutorial. Welcome to Primus Learning. My name is Primus Veku.
All right. So let's get after this, guys. So the first thing that we have to do is to go into our AWS environment and create an EC2 server. So let's do that. <clears throat> so let's go into AWS. I'm sure I'm locked out. And log in. So I'm assuming that you have an AWS account and you can follow along. So let's log into AWS. I'll go to EC2, to the EC2 dashboard. So this is the EC2 dashboard here. And I'm, I'll am i be launching on uh, US East 1, so North Virginia. All right, so let's, let's see. We have three things running here. Let's launch an EC2 instance. So we just go and launch there. We want to give it a name, and the name will simply be Primus Learning. Primus Learning. That's the name of our EC2 instance. All right, let's leave it at a Linux machine. So we want it to be a Linux machine. You could you could use uh, an Ubuntu one, but let's leave this as is. All right, so we want to use a T2 small. The, the, the micro is a little bit too small because the application is kind of uh, heavy. So let's take a small here. So make sure you choose the small um, instance type. All right, let's create a key pair and call this key pair Primus Learning Demo key, Keys. Let's just call it that way. All right, and make it a PEM and create. So we'll create this key pair so that we'll use it to log into this instance. So that's the key pair. Created an, a key pair. For networking, let's use the default security group and make sure you open port um, 80. So click on this, um, allow HTTP traffic. So, and as I said, you can allow anywhere or you can broke it, limit it to your local environment, right? That's no problem. Or to your local um, <clears throat> IP address. That's fine. All right. Um, I think everything else looks good. Uh, let's see. It doesn't need to be in a particular environment. It doesn't need to be in a particular subnet. It doesn't. It's you're fine. So we want a basic machine, right? This is a basic machine that we're creating, and we're creating just one instance, and everything here looks good. All right, let's go ahead and create. So let's create this machine. Give it a moment to to load up. Okay. So it should be launching soon. <clears throat> so our EC2 instance is created. It will take a moment to, you see it's still pending here. It should take a moment for us to connect inside the EC2. Remember the PEM key will connect from where your PEM key is downloaded. So remember we, 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 we just downloaded it so we can connect to it from uh, let's say, let me bring up a terminal so you can connect to it right from where you downloaded it, right? Um, so, oh, this thing is, there's something that's not behaving well here. All right, let's do that. Okay, so the EC2 instance is running, we can connect to it. And as, as I was saying, we'll have to connect to it from where we downloaded our key. So where our key is stored, right? So it's stored on my downloads folder here. And so I'll be connecting from here. So right here, you can just do CMD and bring up a terminal uh, and you'll be able to connect to it. So to connect to it, I will click here and just copy the connection details directly from the instance. So from SSH here, you see, you can just copy um, SSH-I, right? The key pair is already here. You're connecting as an EC2 user and you're connecting to this. Um, uh, public uh, IP address here. All right, so let's go to our terminal again and just paste that command that we copied and hit enter. So you, you want to answer yes here to be connected. You see we are connected to our EC2 instance. It was that simple, guys. So we've connected to our EC2 instance. We can clear our screen here. And uh, so that was that was the first thing that we needed to do. We did that quickly. The next thing you want to do is you want to install Git inside this um, 
inside this EC2 instance, right? So this is considered your local server. This is where you'll be migrating your applications from into an ECS environment in AWS. So this instance right here could be uh, any any server that is running on premise. It could be a server that is running in GCP. Your applications could be running anywhere, any local computer or machine anywhere, right? Any local box anywhere. So EC2 instance, whether it's on AWS or not, it doesn't matter. The, the thing is we just want to have a machine, a Linux machine that we can use to create Docker and all those things inside. And run our run our docker containers inside that's that's basically what we want to do here all right so the the first thing is to install git so you can use the command sudo yum install git why are we using yum of course we're using yum because it's um you see it's that amazon linux type of machine if we're ubuntu you would use apt get remember so we're using this here and it's asking us whether we really want to run it and we're saying yes we want to run it so we've completed the installation of git the next thing that we want to do is we want to clone clone our you know clone the the code that we we'll use for, for for this project right so the code is found somewhere i will still explain the code to you guys i'll still come in and explain the code to you so this is the code right here uh, i've just pushed it out to my repository and this is the repository i created for this project it's a basic repository called docker to ecs project so i will, I will be explaining this in a moment once we do this first step so let me clone this code i'll just clone this code right here to that server so to do that you just need to run git clone right you know that's why we installed git because we want to be able to clone that code up here so let's do git clone and just set up everything and leave it leave it um, for the next steps so we want to do git clone and clone the repository paste that clone command here and it's asking us whether we really want to clone this Mm, okay, permissions denied. All right. So let's clone this. Instead of cloning it through SSH, we want to clone it through HTTPS. All right. So that will allow us to clone because we haven't we, we haven't configured um you know a key gen. So that's why it's refusing. So let's do this. Git clone and we paste that command all right it's cloned so if you do clear and do ls you should see your project in here right so our project is existing we have a project on here now let's install want to install docker um, inside this box so want to install docker inside this box the first thing you want to do to install docker would be to run a update command an update command call it sudo yum update if there are any updates that you want to get there are no updates then you want to do sudo yum install um what are we installing we're installing docker so you can just do dash y here to auto approve it okay so we can run that command to install docker on this box See, it's installing Docker. When when it installs Docker, we want to start the Docker um, um, environment. We want to start Docker, right? So would would uh, okay, it's done installing Docker. So let's do sudo um, systemctl. So this is we use systemctl to start up uh, Docker, right? So start Docker. So sudo systemctl start Docker. That's that's the command we want to use. And then we've started Docker. Now we want to uh, add, you know, want to add the EC2 user to the Docker group. That's what we want to do next. So to do that, you have to do sudo um, user mode. This is this is the command you use, sudo user mode dash ag. So we want to add to that group. So we want to add a user to a group and uh, the group Docker. 
and ec2 dash user all right so i think we got that command right okay let's run that okay i think it should be good so if you do docker here you should see that there is docker that's running in this environment guys all right so once we've done this want to exit this um want to exit this this terminal right here want to exit the 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 EC2 instance. All right, let's exit. So we've exited the EC2 instance. Now let's go back to our, um, <clears throat> let's go back to our code so that I explain the code. So the code you see on here is the same code that I want to explain. I just created a, a, a Docker, uh, rather a Docker to ECS project. That's a repository on my, uh, organization here and just pushed it out so that's all I, that i did all right let's go back to that code so to my to my environment here i'm using by the way i'm using visual studio um visual studio code to run this so vs code to to run my stuff all right so here is the project right so it's the same project docker to ecs project and the application this is this is the application right here. We have two parts of the application. We have this part and we have this part. This is the back end part of the application. So the back end part of the application has all these files right here, right from here to here. That's the back end part of the application. You don't need to know what is inside here, right? They are just files that for instance, that your developer has built and pushed out if you're a DevOps engineer, right? Your developer has built this, pushed it out, and uh, you have to make sure it is deployed. That's what we're doing. And you're deploying it in, in this case, in AWS. Once we do the application, you'll see that we can make some changes here. You see there will be some users that are created, blah, 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 uh, on the application, right? Uh, so you will see that when we do that. So this is the application part or oh, sorry, the back end part of the application. And this is the front end part of the application. So you have some files as well in the front end part of the application. So the files include what? The files include uh, a public uh, repository, which uh, includes the five icons, includes the index.html page, which will just be an HTML document, which defines you know, how your, your page would look, and then some some logos, maybe the logo that we would use for the application and all of those types of files, right? So these are these are the types of files that you would have inside this public file. And then you have the source file, which includes your apps and all of that. And since this is a Node.js um, application, this is how it is looking, right? This is how the Node.js application is looking, it's built. Uh, but we don't want you to be bothered about this because this will probably be built by your developer. It's probably built by your developer. This is the, uh, the front end of the application. This is the back end of the application. That's all you need to know about these two files, right? Front end, front end, back end. All right. Now, the most important file that you need to understand is this Docker file right here. This is an important file uh, for you to understand. All right. Let me explain this file. So the Docker file is simply what will help us build these applications, build this application, sorry. This is <clears throat> the file that will help us to build what, to build this front end and back end to combine these together, right? And run it on a Docker content uh, and create a Docker image from it. We'll create a Docker image from it. So in the file, you have a from. So there is a base image that we're running from, and we're using node, node, node 10. So that's the version, node 10, as this. So this is the name we're giving it, UI build. So the di directory, the work directory that we're using is user slash source slash a slash app, right? This is the a directory where this needs to be built. All right, and we'll do a copy. So what are we copying? We're copying an application that we call my app. You see, we'll copy this my app to an environment. You see there is slash app here, right? So we'll copy to that environment, to so dot my app, right? That's, that's, that's what we're copying, right? 
to that environment. All right, and then we'll run a, we'll, we want to use this run option. Remember the run command that we explained the other day to run a command. So we want to CD into my app. So once we've copied the files over, so once we've copied all these my app files, we want to CD into it and we want to install N, NPM. We want to install NPM and then we want to use NPM to run build. So you see NPM run build. NPM is a package manager. It can run stuff, build stuff, and so on and so forth. So once we've moved these files in here, we want to run build on it. Same thing occurs here. We're using node again and server as server build. So this, this is the UI build and this is the server build. So it's kind of a multi a multi kind of Docker file that we, we have, right? So the doc, Docker file uh, has like two different images that are running in one, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. Okay, so the work directory here is root, and then we want to be copying, we want to copy something, right, from UI. So from UI build, you see, we already built something. And from there, we want to do what? We want to copy something over. So you see, we're copying over the builds from UI. We are copying over this UI build, that build that we did to this environment, right? So remember, we named it um, my app. The build that we did here was we named it my app. We copied over my app to this place and made a build in there. And so this is the build that we did. And uh, you see, this is this is the app that we're copying over to this root directory. So we copy API. So this is API here, which is the back end of the application to that, uh, um, you know, to, to we copy the back end of the application, right? And uh, the package.json, we're copying all these files, any files that have .json at the end of it into an environment, so we'll name that API. So we want to copy API to that directory um, uh, up here, to the, to the directory that we defined up here, right? So we defined a directory, and so we will be copying over all of these files. All these copy files will be get, getting into that directory. And so after copying all the files, we want to do again the same thing that we did up there, run, uh, we, we get into the file, you see, we want to get into that file, the API file, files or the API uh, environment that we copied. So the folder that we copied over and then we want to install NPM in that environment. And after installing, we would do another copy. So we're copying the server build from the API. We have, you see, there are some files inside, right? You see the server.js, we'll copy this over from server.js and then into the new API environment, which is found here after root. All right. And then after that, we will expose this on port 80 and uh, start the node, uh, th this server right here, start this, this application such that it can be running, right? So that is all that this Docker file is, is doing. It's a little bit complex, but it's simple. So the only thing we are doing is we are copying over, we're using uh, uh, node 10 and we are creating a working directory. We have a working directory, which is named this way. I want to copy files over these files from here. The my app files, I want to copy them over to that directory. So you see they will come over slash. So you have user source app slash my app. And that's why you, what you see down here. And then once you've done that, you run a build and you have a build in front of it. And then down here, you want to give a directory again and then copy all the, 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 the build, the files that we've built here and put them inside slash my app, which is the, the my app that we did up here. And then inside build, right? You see, copy build inside. And so, want to get into this API again and copy something over from there. So went into this, this API and we copied these files. You see any file that, that ends with .json, 
please copy it over into API, into API. So you see, we'll create, we have an API uh, here. We'll have an API under this work directory. And so copy all the files inside and then go into that file, go into the API, run, blah, 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 inside. That's basically what we're doing here. So once, once you've understood this file, and that it will expose this to 80, port 80, and uh, start the application, you are good to go. Once you've understood that, that's all we're doing here. All right, so after explaining, let's log back into our EC2 instance. So we go back to our EC2 instance, and um, remember, we have not configured um, our keys yet, our key pairs here. So you have to, we have to uh, configure that. But before we do that, let's just create an ECR, um, an ECR repository. So let's go to ECR. ECI is Elastic Container Registry. So let's go inside and create, <coughs> sorry. Let's go inside and create a repository. So we'll just call this repository Primus Learning. Uh, you know what? Let's call this repository, let's call this repository this. Um, let's see. We can call this repository, mm, let's go back there. We just call it node JS or node something. Yeah, node React app. Ah, let's call it that way. Just name it anyway. Yes, so the repository name is required. We've given it a name. All right. And so everything looks good. Everything looks good. And we create. So we've created a repository. It looks good. Our repository is created. So the next thing we need to do is configure our AWS credentials. So remember, you need to um, uh, you need access to AWS from that EC2. You need access into whatever services from that EC2 instance, right? So I have a key pair that I've created here just for this purpose. I will delete it afterward. So if you're watching and want to use it, sorry for you. <laughs> All right. So. Let's go into the EC2 instance and configure the AWS CLI on it. So we'll just do AWS configure and hit enter. So it has a keeper. It has some. Okay, we'll use that. So this is this is the access key we're granting it. And Copy this one again and go inside and configure it. All right, we we'll use that. Um, say the region here is US East one. It's already set on US East one, so we're good. And the rest, okay. So this is this is what we want to use for this instance. Okay. Oh, sorry. What am oh? Shoot, I'm running it on my local. I've not connected to the EC2 instance. So let's connect to the EC2 instance before we do this. All right, so this is the command to connect. We've connected and let's run the AWS configure in here. AWS configure. I was wondering why it's already set up. So let's configure this. Okay, enter and then copy this other one. And put, let's define this to US East one and hit enter. So we're good here. We have created our CLI. If you do S3, AWS, AWS S3 LS, I think we should be, yes, it's listing our files. So our configuration worked. All right, this is this is good guys. So we're making progress. Um, the next thing we want to do is to log into the repo and so let's go into this repo here actually let's go into this file 
docker file okay we want to run all our commands from in here yes. all right we have this thing here set up okay so let's go to ecr here and view commands so we want to run these commands so that we log we we're able to access this uh, repository right this this repository that we have here the first command is to retrieve an authentication token and authenticate your docker client to your registry. So we want to authenticate that Docker client that we installed to our registry so that there will be access from that Docker client to our registry, which we just created. So we'll run this command. Oops, looks like we didn't copy. Let me go back and copy again. All right. So login succeeded. So we, we succeeded in that. Let's run the second command. The second command is down here, right? Which says, build your Docker image using the following command. So we want to build our Docker image, right? Using this. And remember, it's node react app because that's the name of the repository we created. Remember, we named it node react app. So that's the name of the repository. So let's do that and come in here and run okay so it is building this up right it is building it's using that docker file that we had and it's building everything remember the docker file we're explaining that's exactly what it's doing it's using that docker file to be able to build all of these um these uh, images in here so you see it's pulling it from from here and doing all the builds that it needs to do. It's extracting it, it's pulling, it's building. You see work directory is created. You see the work directory we're explaining down here, removing intermediate container, and then it's copying this. It's copying my app, which is my app to my app on that directory, on the work directory, which we created here. So it's copying my app. So you will see a slash, a slash, my app afterwards right so that's what it's doing and then it's running it's seeded into this it's installing stuff that's why you see it's taking some some sweet time right see the installation of things that are going on all right don't worry about those those errors it's just some warnings that it's giving us here so it's created some a build it's created a build and it continues working here so let's give it a moment to do its thing. All right. So let's give it some time to complete this process. All right, so it's running. It's it's done the first build. Now it's doing the second one. You see, and it's get getting into API and installing stuff. So this install will run again for a while. So it's completed doing that and it successfully tagged Node React app with the tag latest. So it's completed its work. So let's go back here. You see this step, this step was actually building the image and you can see all it did. And then the next one after the build completes, tag your image so you can push the image to this repository, which is our repository, right? So we want to run this command. So Docker tag, no React, this, want to tag it with letters like that uh, so that you can complete, cor correctly push it out to, um, to, to our repository. So let's do that. So it's tagged it, you clear that, you clear our screen and just do Docker images. We should see some images that are running and you see our, our Node React app here. And then you see the latest tag on, on there. It has a latest tag on there. All right, so let's go back and copy the last command. Run the following command to push this, 
this image to your newly created repository. So if you know Docker commands, you should know that Docker uh, push pushes um, uh, uh, an image to your repository. Remember where ECR is same like uh, Docker Hub, right? So, but ECI is the, the AWS uh, native one. So let's do that that now and push this um, this app, Node React app latest to, um, you know, let's push it to our ECR repository. All right, so it's pushing. It takes some time because this application is a little bit heavy. So we are doing the push now. So currently, if you get in here, if you close out here, you see there's no, no image here, but once it, it finishes pushing, you'll see an image uh, pop up here. So it's still pushing. Let's give it a moment, guys. It's taking a sweet time to push, but yes, that's that's the process it has to go through. All right, so it's completed pushing. You see the size of the file, it's, it's kind of big and that's why it, it, it did the push. And if we go up here, it took a while to do the push. If we go up here, you refresh, you see there is an image that is existing now. There is an image, guys. You can even run a scan on this image to make sure it doesn't have vulnerabilities. So you can just do a scan here. But, but you see that your image is already pushed on here, guys. So once the image is pushed, the final thing we want to do is we want to run Docker run. Uh, you want to start, you know, the container. We want to start the container that we built, and so to do that, we can do Docker run dash d dash p. So we want to run it on port eighty eighty. So this is. This will start this container that we've created and you see it will just run everything. And so the, the app that we're running, so we want to run this on port 8080 and the app that we're running is node react app. And of course it has to be the latest version that we are running so this is the command we want to use to push this out so docker run dash d dash p dash p 8080 and then the app that we're running is node react app latest okay so we've started this container right here and so if we go back to here so that to our google uh thing we should be able to see that something is happening if we copy the ec2 instance public ip all right so we've, we've basically created our application on our local environment we've created a docker container and we have started the application all right so let's go here there's Primus Learning that's running. So if you get into Primus Learning and just copy the public IP of this thing, uh, where is the public IP? Let me push this thing up here. It's blocking my view. Oh, it takes us back. All right, so let's get the public IP to this machine. And here is the public IP. And remember, we opened it up to port 8080. So pop port 80, so it can, can run. And voila, we have an application. Here's the application that is running. And you see the application is simply creating users, storing them and listing, and you're able to list them. So let's create a user here called Primus, right? I'll, I'll just fill this information and create a user. You see the number has changed and you can get the number of users that you have 
we have five users that have been created. So the application is neat, it's working. Uh, let's create another user, maybe just call test user. And then just call this test and just give it a random email address, prime at gmail.com, right? And create, you see the number will change to five and you get the users, it gives you five users. <laughs> so this is the application it's running it's working correctly on premise so let's say this application is running on premise in an on premise server right there's a server name you could just copy this and go to route 53 and give it a give it a, a domain name and all that and it will be working correctly like a normal application and how did we run that we just run that on our server which we assume this is an ec2 instance which we assumed is is our local server, right? And it's just a basic server, nothing as Linux server. And so inside the server, remember we we, we cloned our repository and, and this is the repository name, Docker to ECS project. And then we moved, we had these files inside the repository. Remember we had that Docker file, which we explained earlier. And we had two files, we had the backend file and we had the front end file and we did do, uh, use the Docker file to build. Uh, remember, we installed Docker here. So we are using Docker to build this Docker file that builds all these applications and copies them to the various directories as needed, right, in, in Docker. And so we have a thing. So if we do Docker PS here, you should see that there's there are containers. There's a container that is running and it's running on port 80, right? You see, it's running on port 80. And the name, the image name is node react app latest and it's the latest version. That's the tag on it. And that's the tag, that's the 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 image here that we just um um run, right? We started. And so once we started it, we are able to see this application right here. So your application, we are assuming now that the application is running on premise. That's it. So that completes this first part of our tutorial. We just wanted to explain that first part. Um, so as a readme file, it, it explains this first part of the application. So this is what we've done so far, this first part, right? We've created our thing, gone in depth, done a few things, run the commands, and we have an application running. Now let us migrate this application from on-premise, from that server to ECS. How would you do that if you wanted to migrate that application to ECS? The first thing is that we need to create an ECS cluster. So let's go into our terminal. You see, these are basic things, right? We're just doing the basic normal stuff that you could do, anybody can do, right? Uh, you could do it with code, using code, but this, this, is, this is another way you can do it. So let's go to ECS. So we go into ECS and want to create, oh, so there's one, there's one that's running. I forgot to delete it. I thought I deleted this thing yesterday. So we have to delete it. Let's delete this one. It's the demo one that I did yesterday just to, to test, to test out. So let's do a delete on it. Just to test before uh, this, this, you know, to pre while preparing for this, um, lecture or oh, for this tutorial so let's just delete that give it a moment to delete Oh, I see. The delete the cluster cannot be digital while services are active. So there are some service. That's why it didn't delete. There are some services inside, and so we need to delete the services. So we go into it, uh, and hold on. Let's go into the cluster. So there are some services that are running inside the cluster, and you see this is a service. That's why it didn't delete yesterday. So you have to delete and say delete. Let's delete the service. 
So it's deleted the service, then we can delete the task, I think. Let's see if deleting the, the, the deleting it now without deleting the task would work. Since the task is running inside. Okay, so yeah, it's deleted, all right. Okay, so the cluster is deleted. Let's, let's create a new cluster. So let's create this cluster and name it Primus Learning, just like the other one, Primus Learning. So this cl our cluster is called Primus Learning. And we want to leave everything as is with the default default uh, namespace, with the default uh, VPCs and subnets. And we want to make sure it's serverless. It's running on Fargate serverless, right? So this is the AWS Fargate serverless. That's the type that we are choosing, right? The Fargate version here. And then I think everything should look the same right here. So let's create. So after naming it and making sure it's Fargate, we just create. So it take a while to create this image. You can actually see the creation script, the cloud formation script here. So let's give it a moment. All right, so it's created and you see there's nothing that's running inside. So after creating this, we want to create a task inside, right? So let's go inside and create a task definition. Or you can go to task definitions and use this and create a task. You see, because this is what it's running inside. So let's create and create a new task and give it a name. We'll give it a name. Let's just name this Primus Learning Task, maybe. Uh, Primus Learning Task, yet. yes, let's just do that. And then in container one, we want to give a name. Let's just give this Primus Learning as well. Primus Learning. And then you see this part, we want to copy our repository URI and post here and paste here so that it will know you will know where um, our image is running. So let's go to ECR, ECR. And go inside, go inside and copy all of, want to copy this UIR, you see all of this into here. So we'll copy it inside the task definition. And then the port we want to make sure is port 80 because this application will be exposed on port 80, right? And then the, we want to make sure everything looks good here. Yes, it's looking good. So the app environment should be Fargate. Okay, so add more ports, nope. Nope. So everything looks good. Let's go to next. I think everything looks good on this page. So on app environment here, want to choose Fargate, AWS Fargate. That's that's what you, you need to take note of. All right, so it looks good. Everything else looks okay to me. Um, and so everything looks good, guys. You see, this is how you add a task. You just go to next and then you create. So the task is pointing you to the image, right? You're just defining where the image is so that it will be running that particular image of your application. So let's create. And we've created. So we've created our task. We have one task now that is running. 
and the container name is this. This is the container name that we gave it. All right, now we want to create a service inside that cluster. You see, there's a cluster that is running, but we don't have a service inside. You could do that by using this deploy and create service, or you could sim simply go down here. You see services, we have no service and create a service. It, this service will create a load balancer for you. It will create everything for you without you having to go around creating a service file or going through the route that we used uh, to build a Docker image and do all of that uh, in EC2. So you see the, 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 the option you want to choose is Fargate here and the launch type this Fargate, sorry, the launch type is Fargate. The, 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 the platform version is latest that we want to use. And of course it's a service. So you want to make sure it's a service here. And then in this family, we want to select the task definition that we created, which is Primus Learning Task, right? This is how we named it, Primus Learning Task. And the, the version is latest. So this is the first version that we're creating. Then we want to give it a service name. We, we just call this Primus Learning. That's the service name we're giving it. And then we want to make sure it has a load balancer, right? So we've given a service name, the task is one. We want to make sure it is load, load balanced. So the type of load balancer we want to use is application load balancer. So that it creates an application load balancer for us and does all that. We will need to give this application load balancer a name, right? We'll name it um, Primus Learning. Primus learning lb load balancer yeah that's that's how i want to name it then we want to create a new target group and we want to give it a name so we'll make sure we give this thing a name so the target group name should be primus learning target group. So want to name it target group like that. Leave these health checks the way they are. And once you've done that, you're ready to go. Create. So we are not auto scaling anything. You could do that as well and scale out this application as you want, but we're not doing that now. So let's just create. All right, so it's deploying. It will take a moment to deploy this. Once it deploys, we will, we will head to our load balancer and see what's happening in there. So it's taking some time to create. Let's give it a moment. So it's still running. And it's creating the service. So the service is just like the the service, you know, you would create us in if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you create a service in Kubernetes and it will create a load balancer for you and all those those uh, abstractions behind it, right? It's the same thing that we're doing with ECS here. We are creating, we created a task definition and from the task definition, we are creating a service. And so this service um, is built on that image. Remember, we we pass that image, we pass the task, task, and on the task, we give the image URI. So it's it's based on that image.
So it's still running. Let's give it a moment to build all of these. All right, so it's taking a, a few moments here. Just give it a moment, guys. It, it won't take long. That's why I don't want to do a pause before I come back, but mm, seemingly taking a... Yeah, but it takes a few minutes here. I can do a pause and come back. All right, so it just took a few minutes, like maybe two minutes here, and it's it's done creating. So everything is ready to go now. Let's go to, you see, we said once the service is up and running, um, we can, yeah, the, the task is pending. Uh, but once this service is up and running, it's running, we can go to EC2. So let's go to EC2. And go to load balancers. So we'll go to load balancers. And select the load balancer that we just created. See the name, Primus Learning Load Balancer. That's the load balancer we created. So we want to open that up and copy the DNS name. That's the DNS name. It's an A record. Copy the DNS name and go, remember this app? Oh no, not this one. This is the demo one I did yesterday. This app, this is the app we just did today. So if we go here, the same app should be running on Primo's Learning Load Balancer. If this should be successful. Voila, we have the app running. And here it is. Here is your app. You can still create your users, create a user. It will go to four, you list it, create, and so on and so forth. So guys, our your migration is complete. You see, you have two two versions of your migration. There's one that is running on-premise on this IP, and now there's the migrated one, which is running on here, on ECR. So it's, it's you see, it's, it, you didn't have to stop your application from running, right? Your application didn't have to stop running on-premise for you to get this done. It was going at the same time. And now you can safely remove this one and redirect your users to here. So you just need to copy this, go to your DNS environment or to your Route 53 and configure this on the, the domain name that you bought and create a record for this one. And just update your record actually and, and put this as your, your value, right? And it will redirect all your users to this, to this point and no longer the old one. And so you have an environment that is running which is a containerized um, application now. It's a containerized application instead of just an, an EC2 instance that is running. So guys, you see, this this is really easy, right? This, this was really easy. It's a quick migration that you can do and have your apps running on a different environment. Now, remember there is there's something else that you could do. You could, you could go into actions here. Remember, you could go into actions and just as we did on a, another video, we created GitHub Actions to automate a process of um, uh, running containers and stuff um, and, and, and deployments and services inside Kubernetes. So uh, the next step of your project could be just using the same repository and creating a pipeline and creating a CI CD pipeline such that once there is, there is an update here to your files, it automatically will build and have the latest version of your application running in EC, 
in ECS, right? So you could do that and, and, and work on it as an extra step for you guys. So <laughs> I hope this, this video was helpful. I just wanted to help you understand how uh, you could migrate a, an application quickly from an on-premise environment from a normal normal um, server like an EC2 instance which we created in this first section and uh, move it over to ECS which is um, uh, the elastic container service that AWS provide and we follow just a few steps here and you see we have the application up and running so guys thanks for watching I will just go ahead and do the deletion part so please uh, delete your EC2 instance so you don't incur costs. So I'll do that by coming in here, going to my EC2 instance and just terminating it. Go to actions. Oh, sorry. Go to state <laughs> and terminate. Yes, terminate. And then I'll go to EC ECS. Remember, ECS, you have to def uh, clean up the service first. So go to ECS, go to the, to the service. So the service is here, down here, and clean up this service. So delete, and you can pass force delete, delete here. Once it's deleted, you can then delete your cluster, and it will delete other things for you. All right, so we've deleted this. Should be deleted in a moment. And voila, we are done. All right, thanks guys for watching. Please hit the, the subscribe button and, and thanks for watching. Uh, we'll continue to bring you content. The next video that we'll be doing will be, you know, migrating applications into Kubernetes. Right, migrating applications into Kubernetes so that you see how you can do that and also build a pipeline on top of it. Uh, so that will be our next video. Uh, stay tuned, hit the notification button so that when our new videos come up, you should be able to get notified about them. Thanks guys for watching. My name is Primus Veku and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.